<laughs> wow. Um, I can't lie to you guys. After that goal went in for Manchester United, I was speechless, fam. I was, I was numb. I was, honestly, I was, I, I can't, honestly, I couldn't tell you guys how I felt at that time because I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. Um, considering how we played today, did we deserve to win? Absolutely not. But I don't think we deserve to lose either. Is a draw fair? Yes, it is fair. But when you're 1-0 up and it's the 94th minute, you can't, you cannot bottle it from there. You, you just can't. And this has been a recurring theme this whole year. I'm not even talking about this season because it happened against Tottenham in the big six games this season. It's already happened. But just in 2022 alone, it's been awful. We did it against Man United today. And then we did it against West Ham. We got away with it, but we also did it against West Ham. We did it against Tottenham. We did it against Brentford. We did it against Wolves last season. We've done it way too many times in 2022. And it's not good enough, man. It's just not good enough. Now, when it comes to the lineup. When it comes to the way we played, I'm sorry. That first half, or shall I say, the first 35 minutes, that's on Potter, I'm sorry. He fucked it today. Yeah? He set those players up badly. Badly. Let's go through the lineup. So he played three at the back. Played a 3-4-3, three, three, like I told you guys he would. I said he would do it. He played a back three, Kepa in goal. Play a back three of Aspilicueta. No, sorry. He played Chalabar, Thiago Silva Cucurella as the back three. He played Chua left wing back. He played Aspilicueta right wing back. He played Co uh, he played Ruben, like I said, and Jorginho played. And then he played the three of Mason, uh, Sterling and Aubameyang. And straight away I was like, not happy, not happy, because I looked at their midfield and I thought to myself. Casemiro, Eriksen, Bruno, could be a long day. Could be a long day. One of them is always going to have time on the ball. That's what happened in that first half. Three, All three of them at times. When one was marked, guess what? Casemiro had time and space. Casemiro tonight was man of the match. He was the best player on the field by miles, bro. And then I'd say Chalabar was the best player after that. But Casemiro tonight was having the time of his life on the ball. He could spray it left, right. He had time and space, you know, passing it in between the lines. Ericsson at times had space to go, to get on the ball and give give it. Yeah? The way those first 35 minutes went, we were exposed. Those players tactically were suffering. Jorginho and Ruben were suffering. They couldn't handle the press and control that Man United had in that midfield. When we compare them playing out, the, out of the back, Compared to us, compare it. When we played out from the back, when, when we were playing out from the back, they were pressing us high, and it forced Kepa to go long so many times. And you know what the problem was? The problem wasn't Kepa going long. The problem was, it was just easy for a Man United player to just get the ball back. No second balls. No one is no 50-50s. Nothing. No one is near the Man United players when Kepa's, you know, hoofing the ball when he needed to. Because it's one thing for a goalkeeper, right? A goalkeeper can just hoof the ball. It doesn't matter whether he gets it accurate or not in terms of his aim. The most important thing is second balls. Where was that? There was none of that. The 50-50s, they were winning it. Aerial jewels, they were winging it, winning it. Like I said, when we're playing out, the, out of the back... Our only solution was to get it to Aspilicueta down the right-hand side and drive forward. And then, when he'd give it, guess what? Their midfield just won it back most of the time. Most of the time, their midfield just won it back. And then, when you look at their press, when you look at Man United playing, we were pressing them high. I'm seeing Jorginho as a 10. Ruben off the cheek is deeper than him. And all of a sudden, Ericsson's in space. 
off my United goal. They pass it out wide to Luke Shaw. Sancho, today, he killed a lot of their attacks. I'll be honest with you. But it was so easy for Manchester United to just play us off the park. Tactically, Ten Hag got it spot on. And Graham Potter set those players up to fail. That midfield battle, we were suffering. We couldn't play out. We couldn't control the game. We couldn't control the tempo. It was all Man United. I'm seeing overloads from Dallow and Luke Shaw. I'm seeing Anthony just cutting on his left foot for fun. I'm seeing Ericsson, Bruno, Casemiro playing it in between the lines. Having so much time and space on the ball. And thank God Potter changed it in the second half. I mean, not in the second half. In the 35th minute when he brought on cover. When cover came on and we played the diamond with Jorginho... In the middle, as the lone six, Ruben on the right, Cover on the left, other three-man midfield, and Mason occupying that 10 roll, that diamond, it worked so much better. We started controlling the game. Kovacic changed our whole game. He made us play better as a team. We had more control. We had more tempo. We're actually now pressuring them. They couldn't, you know, Casemiro all of a sudden, Eriksen and Bruno couldn't, you know, all of a sudden find that space and have that time on the ball because every time they got the ball boom, we we're onto them straight away why because we packed out the middle we packed out the midfield Jorginho was a lot better Ruben iffy game Kovacic was brilliant when he came on Mason Mount was a threat throughout the whole game we were, we were able to actually play better now in terms of up front we didn't create shit today we did not do shit up front today I'll be surprised if our XG is over 0.5. That's how bad we were going forward. Sterling, nothing. Abamyang, non-existent. And when he had the ball, he made the wrong decisions with it, especially when he was down the left-hand side. You know? It was just a really, really poor half. And if Man United were going to score and take the lead, it had to be in the first half because I knew they were not going to take the lead in the second half considering we was going to up our levels. Tactically, Potter got better. The way we, we set up was a lot better. It was it was more um, it was more solid in the middle. And we gained confidence from it. In the second half, we, I think, for the most part, controlled the game, controlled the tempo, etc., etc. And as well as that, um, look... It was just hard for us to get the goal. Like, we didn't want to create chances. When you need a goal, he decided to take Aubameyang off, which I just think he's one of those players where if you give him a chance, which we did not in the second half at least, because in the first half, we did have a few moments, despite tactically getting absolutely slaughtered and despite the players were, were suffering, we had some moments in that half. Aubameyang had two chances to maybe um, score against De Gea, but he didn't take advantage of it at all. Um, the first one, there was a ball over the top. I don't know why he didn't header, header it. He decided to use his foot to get to the ball. And then the second one, Sterling um, lays it off to him just about. And he, I think Aubameyang got put off by Dalo. And if he had just taken that touch and had the shot, Aubameyang probably scores. So, overall in this game, a 1-1 is deserved. It probably should have ended 0-0. I'm not going to lie. Um, poor game for me from Potter overall. I can't lie. Um, at least he rectified it with bringing Cover on and it gave us a little bit more stability and more control. Um, and it gave us the ability to sort of like, you know, just stop Man United, especially their midfield, from just having so much time and space on the ball to do their thing. Because I was really, really pissed off. Because I didn't want us to play a back three. I wanted us to play a back four. And I explained why I wanted us to play a back four. Because I, I don't want us to be scared of this United team. But guess what we did? We gave them too much damn respect. Gave them too much respect. You can get at this team. But we didn't today. We didn't today. And I think that first half killed us. I can't lie. It killed the momentum of the whole game, bro. If we'd started with that sort of system, the diamond, or maybe just a 4-3-3... I guarantee you we would have scored a lot earlier and we would have had better control in this game and we wouldn't have allowed Man United to play as well as they did in the first 35 minutes of that game. And then obviously he made subs. Pulisic came on. You had Chukwameka come on. Broha came on as well later on. We got the penalty. That's when we got the pen. Um, it's a penalty. Scott McTominay, I don't know what he's doing. That's really, really stupid of him, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. And, yeah, Jorginho slotted in, no doubt in my mind. 
Yep. Nice, cool, collected. I was kind of scared for him, I can't lie, when it was given. But when I saw that he was staying away from the crowd, you know, from the main night players trying to debate or when Luke Shaw was trying to intimidate him by going up to him, distracting him, making his brain, you know, confused. Jorginho, ice cold, great penalty, 1-0. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, come on. Like, we've been shit today. We haven't played well. We probably don't deserve to be in the lead. But let's just now... Um, see out this game and uh, get the three points. But no, of course not. They they equalised. And I can't lie, the header from Casemiro is world-class. Like, it's actually a world-class header. Kepa, yeah, I, I can't, I'm, I'm seeing people are actually blaming Kepa. Like, what, what? Are you actually dumb? Like, seriously, are you dumb? This is how I know, yeah, people are just preying on his downfall. People are just preying on Kepa's downfall. Instead of supporting him, no, no, no. You're just going to wait for him to make a mistake and then you can cook him and say, oh, Mendy should get back in the team. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. That shows me that people are just hoping for Kepa to have a downfall. Nah, disgusting. Praise him when he's doing well. And that was not his fault. That goal was not his fault at all. He got a fingertip save to it, in which I thought world-class save. But it's unfortunate. It hit the post and it went in over the line. It went over the line. It's unlucky. Kepa made a brilliant save, but it went in at the end of the day. It's a world-class header from Casemiro. Give credit to him. He was brilliant tonight. He was probably man of the match throughout the whole game. He was definitely Man United's best player. Our best player today was probably Chalabar. And if I go through the ratings real quick, because this video was so dead, it's not even worth my time doing another video about player ratings. So I'm just going to give you a quick player ratings right here, right now. Obviously, Kepa in goal. Look, at the end of the day, yeah, if it wasn't for this guy, we would have been losing. We would have lost a couple games already. OK, and today he made a couple good saves um, in, in the first half. Um, from the likes of Anthony, Rashford, um, Bruno as well, etc, etc. Um, he done his job today. And on the ball, he was solid for the most part. Yeah, had some moments, but it is what it is, okay? So for me, Kepa was solid today, 7. He was very unlucky for that goal. It was a fingertip save that just hit the post. It's unlucky. Stop blaming him. Your agendas are disgusting. It's disgusting. Bro, this players I may not rate in this team, but if they're on that pitch and if they do well, I will praise it. Imagine praying for your own player's downfall. Imagine praying that you, you want a player to, 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 to not do well. That's crazy to me. It's Chelsea Football Club first. And whoever plays for Chelsea, you want them to do well. I didn't like Timo Werner. But I wanted him to do well every time he stepped on the field for us. Simple as that. Praying for downfall. You lot are a joke, man. I swear down. So Kepa 7. Chalabar today, our best player by far. Our best player by far. This guy put in a defensive masterclass. Locked up Sancho. Sancho did absolutely nothing. His decision making may have been awful. He tried to 1v1 him at times. Nope. Nope. Key interceptions. Defensive awareness. Good positioning. Brilliant in the air. Bro. Brilliant from Chalabar. Like... Sensational performance, man. So, so good, Chalabar. People need to put some damn respect on his name. So, yeah, he gets an 8.5. Thiago Silva, 7. I thought he was all right today. Done what he had to do. Nothing special. I'm not going to lie. Um, Cucurella, he won off early. There's no point rating him. Um, I thought it was harsh that he won off instead of Chilwell because I thought Chilwell was worse than Cucurella in my opinion. But it is what it is. Um, when it comes to Aspilicueta, Aspilicueta as the game went on got worse in my opinion. So I'm just going to give him a six for that reason. Um, because I felt like Man United, especially when they were chasing the game, were getting some great joy down that left-hand side. So yeah, Aspi gets a six in my opinion. Um, when it comes to Chilwell, Chilwell gets a six as well. I thought... Going forward, not at all great. But then at the same time, I think that also comes to tactically, him mainly him, he was pushed back a lot, whether it was by Anthony or Dalo. Dalo got forward bare times in this game today. You know, he had a decent game, Dalo. So it's one of those ones where, yeah, it is what it is. And Chilwell in build-up was okay, so he gets a six. Jorginho struggled in that first half. Struggled in that first half. So did Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Yeah, but in the second half, he got better and better. Ice cold penalty. For me, overall, I'll give Jorginho a 7. Um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I think 6.5. I think he's another one where, as the game went on, he got worse as well, in my opinion, alongside Aspilicueta. Um, so I'm giving, giving him a 6.5. Um, Mason Mount, I think, was a threat throughout the whole game, in my opinion. He was 
um, yeah, just trying to cause trouble, trying to get on the ball. He was trying to link up. He was trying to play passes. He was trying to put crosses in. He tried today, Mason Mount. That's all I can ask for when, you know, things are not going well for us. So for me, Mason Mount gets a... Uh, Gets a set seven for today's game, seven point five for today's game. Abamyang gets a five. Um, boy, non-existent. I can't lie on the ball, not good enough. Sterling today as well, five average today. In my opinion, not good enough. Could do a lot better than that. And another game where he hasn't scored against Manchester United. Um, the subs not really gonna rate them except for Kovacic. I thought when Kovacic came on, he was probably our second best player overall. I'm giving Chalabar. I'm saying Chalabar was our best player because he played the whole game, but Kovacic is very, very close. I'll give Kovacic an eight. I think he impacted the game very well for us and made us play better as a team, had control, his dribbles, his passing, his link-up plays, one touch, two touch, etc., etc. So, yeah, Kovacic gets an eight. Um, Brower came on, did decent. Pulisic came on, did all right. Um, those guys can get like a seven. Um, who else came on, fam? Uh, Chuko Maker came on as well, gets a seven. He did all right as well. I think that's it in terms of players that came on. Um, if anyone else came on, um, bear with me. I forgot. But yeah, that's it, guys. If you did enjoy, please like, comment, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, follow my social media down below. And yeah, that's been your match review and mini player ratings. And boy, we didn't deserve to win, but here we are. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.